Hey guys, we are back with some more Halifax Tugboats GM mode, and we got up to the trade deadline, and now we have a difficult decision to make, because uh, I was really stumped with this uh, trade that we have to make here. We're going to be trading Dirk Stepan in this episode, because he is just, he's getting, I mean, he don't get me wrong, he's been getting it done, but his value right now is as high as it's going to be, probably for the rest of his career. Because, I mean, look at his, uh, I mean, just look at his contract. Five years left at 6.5. He's going to be 38 by the time that's over. Uh, no thank you, personally. I mean, it's just not worth the uh, drop-off that he's going to have after he's done producing all these points. And, you know, he started out the year, if, if I'm not mistaken, he started out the year as an 87, 86. So, 88 is as high as he's going to get in terms of overall here. And uh, we have to trade him but the first trade i want to make uh yes that's right we're making multiple trades uh i just want to get vidi vanio out of here because he is taking up a lot of cap and he's no longer a main guy on our roster so we are i actually have uh <laughs> like three trades written down here that we need to make in this episode so we're going to be trading vidi vanio to the colorado avalanche because if you take a look at their defensive core, they got nobody. <laughs> uh, they got Bigorous and Shen. Those are the only two guys above an 80 overall So on their defensive core. So, Vidi Vanio <laughs> has the potential, or probably will, play on the Colorado Avalanche's first defensive pairing. And ice time has always been a problem for Vanio ever since we lost the Stanley Cup two or three years back. So... You know what, this is a good destination for Vanio. Vanio's young, uh, Colorado wants young defensemen, so we're going to just get a draft pick back for him. Um, we are going to be taking Colorado's third, and unfortunately we cannot get, uh, we can get, not get just, you know, a third. We have to take a player back here because of their roster situation i suppose we're gonna be taking james van reemsdyke back don't worry he's not a crazy contract he's a one-year deal 1.18 not not a big deal we can always release him and he could be playoff depth maybe if we need him so uh oh what happened there <laughs> i thought i added him all right so we're gonna re-add van reemsdyke here see if all right there we go so that should go through because i've <laughs> kind of already tested this so there you go proposed trade trade accepted very nice so that's one trade done uh, some cap cleared up for this offseason. Next trade I want to make. Uh, and, okay, so this trade, <laughs> it may not make too much sense right now, but once you see the next trade, it will make sense. We're going to be trading Nick Letty right now, boys, because, all right, 5.6. So it's not the worst contract, but he is 32. By the time his contract's up, he's going to be 35. I'd rather get some value out of him now. I wouldn't... I don't want to have, like, another Stepan situation. And, I mean, Stepan's situation isn't bad. It's just, you know, I'd prefer not to wait that long to trade Nick Letty. And, uh, especially what we can get for him now. So, once you, once you guys see this trade, uh, I think the, the next two trades, you'll agree with me. So, we're going to be heading to Tampa Bay right now. Because... If we, again, take a look at Tampa Bay's defensive core, it is not great. <laughs> they got Victor Hedman. They got Cuckoo. Uh, not really too much else. <laughs> I mean, I know, like, I know the record it says that they're, they're a really good team. And that they obviously won the Stanley Cup last year. But when you take a look at how many forwards they have, like, look at this, like 95, uh, 89, 88, 88, 87, 87, 87, 85, 85. I mean, just an overabundance of forwards right here. So as you can see, they, they have a clear need for defense. So that's why I'm trading Nick Letty to the Tampa Bay Lightning. And we are going to be trading for Braden Point. So he's 27 years old. This is exactly what I was looking for. I just kind of overlooked him at the time. That we were doing that video uh the last video so i mean i get that he has a great morale he's probably going to drop off a little bit in terms of overall when we trade for him but when you take a look at his offensive awareness 92 he has a great puck skills category i mean the passing isn't you know 
where I'd like it to be, but the rest of the his offensive awareness makes up for that. He's got a really decent shot. He's got a decent shot. He's a good skater. Got uh, I mean, he's not going to be on the penalty kill, but he's okay defensively. You know, so I think it makes sense to trade for Braden Point here if we're trading away Derek Sapon because he's on a one year left. Um, he's got around five mil salary. We'll be able to afford him since we're trading up, trading so much, uh, so much cap. You know. So I feel like we'll be able to re-sign Braden Point long term. Uh, I mean, he's he's had 45 points on the season. That's probably playing as on the second line of Tampa Bay. And uh, we're not going to just trade for Point straight up because I know that will go through for a fact. So we are going to trade for the second and the fifth for this year for Tampa Bay. And I'll show you why uh, I'm trading for so many draft picks here. And that is going to be the trade we make. I think I've made my point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that that um, I'll, I'll I'll see myself out. <laughs> so we are gonna make that trade right now. We now have Braden Point, and uh, we're gonna go to roster moves here, I suppose. Uh, what do we particularly need to do? Oh, defenseman, right? Uh, yeah. So no, no, we have we have eighteen skaters. We're just uh, we'll, we'll replace, uh, I'm not going to do best lines because I don't want to, you know, mess with the chemistry or anything. So for now, I'll just put JVR here. And keep in mind, JVR is not going to be, uh, oh, Brain Point. Oh, so JVR is already in the minors, right, right. Yeah, so I figured Brain Point would drop down to an 87, but still. 91 offensive awareness. Puck skills are really still, still really good. I mean, th this guy is hopefully going to, produce the same amount as Derek Stepan, which speaking of which, we are going to trade him now. So, now, <laughs> with Derek Stepan, yeah, you, I mean, you guys can tell, I really had to uh, think outside the box for this trade, because I, I didn't want Stepan's value to drop anymore, and I didn't want him to become a David Clarkson situation 2.0, because, I mean, if you look at his contract, I mean, that's just ridiculous, so... We are going to be trading Derek Stepan to the Anaheim Ducks. Because if you take a look at Anaheim, uh, take a look at their forwards. They got Conley here. Uh, Jerry Conley. But then after that, who do who they really have it forward? Like, <laughs> they have 85 Dubois, Richie, Kurt Isles, Steele, Jones. I mean, it, it drops off immediately after Conley. So, And they have a strong defensive core. That's the part about the Anaheim Ducks that I like. And here's here's where trading Nick Letty starts to make sense. We're going to be trading for Cam Fowler. He's the same age as Nick Letty, keep in mind. We are not we didn't trade away Letty to upgrade the, uh, the age. Like, we didn't, you know, they're both 32. I don't mind trading for Cam Fowler for one reason. We are going to be taking 45% of his cap off of his contract. So we're going to add Cam Fowler. We're going to take 45 percent or they're gonna take 45 percent now i mean i know the salary wise this doesn't make sense at the moment because anaheim's salary is going way up um and i have no idea why that is because in my trade sheet here that does make sense okay so it, it looks like the game glitched out a bit because the you know it, it's it's saying that this trade will work for anaheim so here's why, boys, that's I traded for all those draft picks. <laughs> so we are going to be trading our 24, uh, 2024 second round pick, our third round pick, and Montreal's third round pick. That's why I traded for so many picks right there, boys. And this will, I know for a fact, go through proposed trade. There you go. I tried getting Anaheim to retain 50%, but... They wouldn't even retain 46, so I, I just went as high as I could with that trade. So, now, we are starting to look much better. I mean, overall-wise, we're, like, the same. But we needed to make that move to get value out of, um, what's his name? Dirk Stepan, and to get the contract situation settled, which we now have done. So, I'm going to replace point here. I'm going to put Cam Fowler there, and uh, 
right here, we will put Braden Point. Very nice. Substituting all lines. So, I mean, it, it, it looks relatively the same, honestly. Because, uh, you know, Stepan was an 87 when the season started. And if Point gets, you know, a morale boost, then he'll go back up to 88 where he was before on the Tampa Bay Lightning. And Cam Fowler, I mean, he's not really that much different from Nick Luddy, to be honest with you. A uh, bit weaker of a puck skills category, but that's honestly about it. That's about it. That's the only difference between Cam Fowler and Nick Luddy. Oh, and the other difference. I mean, they have the same contract length as well, but we get Cam Fowler at a 3.325 salary for the next three years. That's the part I like about Cam Fowler. So, I mean, now we, 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 got, we got the roster to do it, boys, I think. Uh... And I was looking at our uh, record here, and I don't think 60 wins... I mean, 60 wins is still possible, technically. There's 20 games left. We have 42 wins. That means we need 18 wins, and that's not very likely. I mean, it's again, it's still possible. <laughs> we could do it for two seasons in a row. I would be absolutely amazed. But it's not likely. So I'm I'm just hoping that we can just go into the playoffs on a winning streak and feeling confident enough in our team to, you know, <laughs> uh, go past the first round. <laughs> so we are going to advance past the trade deadline right now. Or uh, actually, hold on. Wait a minute. I just want to check the power play and make sure nothing screwed up when I had the best lines or replace player or whatever. All right, so, uh, yeah, that's all good. That's all good. Defense, that's all good. Special teams now. Uh, Fowler, Pouliot. Hmm. Yeah, we'll keep Fowler there for now. Uh, yeah, that looks good. That looks good. Uh, you know what? I think, I think Fowler can play the point in place of Kozlov now. On the penalty kill. Yeah, I'm going to put Fowler on the penalty kill. Instead of Kozlov. I know the penalty kill has been doing alright with Kozlov there. But it just do it doesn't feel right. So we're going to put Fowler back in there. On the penalty kill. 4-4. Uh, four four. Yep, that looks good. That looks good. That looks good. That looks good. And that looks good. Very nice. So, now let's get back into the simulation. We'll simulate up to the end of the regular season. And hopefully we can have a... Hopefully we can have a good one. <laughs> uh, the only part about this trade, these trades that made me a bit nervous was that we're messing with our team chemistry a bit. But hopefully, again, we traded for a right-handed playmaker center in Braden Point. So hopefully that feels the same as Dirk Stepan to uh, Trevor Hensick and to Oliver Bjorkstrand. And hopefully Cam Fowler can play well with John Klingberg. So that's the only real difference here. So... We're going to just advance past the trade deadline. Nope, I'm not making any more trades. This is the roster we're sticking with. And hopefully we can get it done. Pittsburgh, let's see. 3-2 overtime win. Very nice. Toronto, Carolina back-to-back -back as well. Let's see what we're what we're going to have here. 3-2 loss against Toronto. And yeah, <laughs> the 60-win season is not looking likely, boys. <laughs> uh, yeah, just keep, just keep current ticking prices with it. Go away. I don't I don't I don't use this thing. <laughs> I don't know why I have a mode on. Five to one loss. Come on, boys. Get that chemistry back built up. Three to nothing win. Very nice. <laughs> Against VD Vanio. Poor poor guy. He's at the <laughs> Oh man. Another three nothing win. There you go. We're starting to gel a little bit here, boys. Get it together. Alright, shootout loss. So we got a point. We're making the playoffs anyway, so it's not that big of a deal. But, uh, you know, every win, uh, another win is nice here. So, yeah, th yeah there you go. Three to two w overtime win, especially against division rivals. That's what I like to see. A scouting assignment, yep. So, let's see. Yeah, we scouted those places one time. Uh, let's go. Were we going defensemen? I think we were. Let's go to Finland for six weeks for defensemen. That'll be good. All right. So hopefully we can, you know, really just use this last stretch of the season as a confidence builder and just hope that, you know, <laughs> we can start gelling 
I mean, right now we're looking a bit inconsistent. That's not what I like to see. Come on, boys. Got to, you know, get on a bit of a winning streak here before the playoffs. Get that chemistry. I want to see that chemistry up at an 80. We're up to 50 wins. We're definitely not getting 60. I know that. Um, there's not enough games left in the season to get 60 at this point. But we have 40, We have 52 right now. If we could end on 56, that would be great. That would be great if we could get to 56 wins. <laughs> I would be satisfied with that. I mean, honestly, we we probably still have the we even have the president's trophy probably with a season like that still. So that's a still a very good season. So yeah, two back to back wins against the Rangers, very nice. With 54, if we can make it 56, that would make me really happy, Halifax. That would make me really happy going into the playoffs. New Jersey, that is going to be a five to two loss. All right, so we got. 55. That's still not bad. That's still not bad. So I will I will take that. I mean, that's only five <laughs> less wins than we had last year. Yeah, we still won the President's Trophy. No, uh, no doubt. Yeah, 113 points. That's very nice. So let's check out the stats now. Leading point scorer, Derek Pouliot, 74 points. Uh, that is very nice. Braden Point, I believe he had 45 points on Tampa Bay. So he's he definitely fits in. On that line with Hensick and Bjorkstrand. Speaking of Hensick, 55 points. Plus 28. Very nice. Connolly, 55 points. So he didn't have as great of a season as he had last year. But it looks like I was spot on <laughs> with my prediction for how he would end. 25 goals. 30 assists for 55 points. Plus 17. Very nice. And uh, Bjorkstrand, 51 points. Klingberg, 49. Raquel, 47. Rowe, 42 on the third line. So that's good. Kozlov, 38. I believe he finished a bit higher than he did last year. He had 35 points last year, right? No, oh, 30. Yeah, so uh, career high for him right there. That's very nice. Uh, Fowler, 35. I don't know how many. I, I didn't really pay attention to how many points he had on Anaheim. So, But uh, uh, I didn't really pay attention to his plus minus on Anaheim either. So hopefully that uh, improved from Anaheim. Uh, Meyer, 30 points on the second line. I mean, not bad. Whatever. <laughs> he's not paid to uh, score goals, really. He's paid to play defense. Although, you'd think for a $6.6 .6 million man, he'd be able to get some more offense. But whatever. We have other players for that. Uh, Seth Jones, I mean, plus 43. I mean, my God, this guy is a defensive beast. Shaw, Hartman, all these guys down here. Hudon with 22 points. Wilson, 26. Plus 12. So, it looks like that trade worked out just fine. Uh, JVR, I don't know, uh, oh yeah, 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 he's in, uh, Cleveland, right, so, McBain finished off the season with 12 points, plus 14, so that was a good trade for Vanio there that we made, or getting rid of Vanio. Corpusalo finishing the season with a 1.83 goals against average, very nice, save percentage of .938, what a beast is Jonas Corpusalo, 12 shutouts, my God, um, 42 win season. Let's see how many uh, 40 win seasons has this guy, has this guy had in a row. Uh, let's see. I'm really interested in seeing this. Okay, so he's had six 30 plus win seasons in a row and two 40 win seasons in a row. So that is, I mean, this guy is just a stud. And uh, couldn't have asked for a better goaltender, honestly. Gets it done in the playoffs, gets it done in the regular season. Hopefully I didn't just jinx him. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, I mean, we're looking pretty solid, boys. We are looking pretty solid. I mean, besides Fowler's plus minus, I, I would, again, I would imagine most of that came from Anaheim. <laughs> we're, we're not that bad. There's no way we're that bad defensively. So, yeah, and JVR hasn't even played on the team yet. So, and likely never will. <laughs> so, I mean, Brayden Point's working out for us. Cam Fowler's probably working out for us. I can't really tell with him, but... You know, we're just, we're clicking. We are still clicking. We have that same, relatively the same chemistry as we had with Nick Letty and Derek Stepan. So, I have no complaints there. Let's check out the team stats. Yep, we won the President's Trophy. 113 points. 55, 24, and 3 is our final record. Uh, goals for per game. We are first in our division. 3.12. Goals against average. We are first. 2.18. Uh, power play percentage, we are second, 22.4. Penalty kill, we are, I believe, second. Yes, we are second with 84.2.
Things are looking up, boys. We are in our last 10. We are 8-2-0, so we're going into the playoffs pretty nicely. We have the best record in our division currently for the last 10. And home, we are 29-10-2. Away, we are 26-14-1. So, I mean, that's... I. Uh, honestly, that's that's still a really good season, boys. We didn't have that 60-win season like we had last year, but you can't expect that every year, right? So, I mean, boys, we're... Uh, oh, jeez. You're going to do this to me again, EA? <laughs> Switching the goalies on the last day. My God. All right, let's 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 switch uh, Stellars and Corpusala really quick and then turn off uh, goalie rotations for the playoffs and do all that fancy stuff in the league settings here so that I don't forget for next episode because I probably will if I don't do it now. Uh, there you go. Okay, so that's taken care of. And, uh, I mean, boys, we are back in the playoffs. So let's see what we have and then we'll end off the episode because, I mean, it's looking good. It's looking good once again. The, it looks like, you know, trading all those key players in the offseason. Remember, uh, we traded Bittner. We traded Saad. We traded uh, P.K. Subban. And we still, and, and uh, Scott Harrington as well, defensive beast for us who was last year. Uh, I mean, Vineo is now off the team. We had so many departures and new additions, but we're still a really good team. And that, that just, you don't really see that too often in the NHL these days. So, I mean, we're, we're, we got a great foundation, man. We really do. There's no excuse for not making the playoffs from now on. <laughs> so, first round of the playoffs, we are going up against the Carolina Hurricanes. They are 45-27-10. We are 55-24-3. We are clearly the better team on paper in terms of a record. But, as we saw last year, that does not matter. <laughs> uh, the playoffs is a whole new season. So, looks like in the playoffs, it's going to be Arizona and Edmonton, Calgary and Anaheim. St. Louis and Vancouver, Dallas and Winnipeg, Tampa Bay and New Jersey, Montreal and Buffalo, New York Islanders versus the Washington Capitals, and your Halifax Tugboats versus the Carolina Hurricanes. So, I mean, boys, it's playoff time once again, and hopefully we can pull through this time. Let's go Tugboats. Tugboats.